All right, and welcome back to Aaron's Garage. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. I'm not gonna be working on the 510 and I'm not gonna be working on the Figaro. Instead, today I'm gonna to be working on my daily driver, which is my 1975 Datsun 280Z. Thursday, whenever I went to go to work, my door handle broke. I don't know exactly what's wrong. I'm hoping there's just a metal piece inside the door that fatigued and sort of cracked itself. I'm gonna take off the door skin and sort of take a look inside. Okay, another thing that's been happening on the car is whenever I go to roll up the window, it actually like sort of freezes here and it, like there's a lot of like pressure and I don't want to like hurt the car and I usually end up having to go sort of pick up on the on the window a little bit like that. See how it sort of slid and then it rolls up the rest of the way, even a little bit more and then it rolls up. So there's something else in the track there that I need to take a look at just to see whether or not I should fix anything. Again, this is the car that I drive every single day to and from work, rain or shine, so I like to have the windows that work and I need to have a door handle that works. Otherwise, I'm a 33 year old man that has to crawl in through the passenger door and open up my door, which doesn't look very professional. So I try to um, at least keep it looking somewhat nice. Some things that I'm gonna look at, like, I would really like to replace this squeegee, but holy cow, are they expensive. And I'm gonna look at maybe adding in the felt piece on the inside of this window. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you like what you see. All right, so taking a look inside the door, hopefully you can see this. This little piece I believe is supposed to be wedged in that piece down there, so then it picks it up. Um, but it's somehow come out, so I've got to figure out sort of how it attaches up to the door handle. So that's sort of where I'm at. All right, so after consulting the factory service manual, this bar that is sort of bowed in the factory service manual is actually completely straight. So I believe that's probably my issue, is that over time and just hundreds upon hundreds of door openings, it's bowed itself and then slipped itself out of the hole like it's supposed to. So here we go, I'll go ahead and straighten it back up and I will put it into the slot for the door opening and see whether that works. All right, so in order to do this the correct way, I'm gonna actually take the door handle out, take a look at it, and then straighten it up and put it back in. Uh, for this, I needed an eight millimeter end wrench, and I've got a ratcheting end wrench, which I think will help quite a bit. There's a little retaining piece that I didn't know about that popped out. All right. So you see this piece, this piece is supposed to be somewhat straight and it is nice and curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten it and go from there. One of the ingenious things about this is that Dotson actually gave you a threaded rod here in order to adjust this over time. Now, I don't want to booger up threads here, so just try to give one more little. Actually, that statement is followed by a but I'm going to. Okay, now I have a fairly straight piece that will likely last for many, many more years. Okay, now I find the real reason uh, why. It's not necessarily that this piece is broken it's that this piece has fatigued so much that it actually snapped. So now that I see that, I might need a new door handle. So, hmm. 
That is interesting. Okay. Well, that makes a little bit more sense. Well, we're going to go ahead and see if we can weld it because it's already broken. You might as well see whether it'll it'll weld itself back. I don't have high hopes. Uh, especially with it under spring tension like it is. Alright, so this is crazy. I heated this piece up so much the interior melted out of it from that spot right there. But this piece sort of stayed, retained its shape up top. So I actually liquefied the inside of this piece. So needless to say, this is done. Um, if I put it back in the car, I might get another week or two out of it, or one month, or two months, who, uh, who knows. But like, this piece is definitely done. But I'm going to at least reconnect it and then order a new door handle because it's not that hard to change out. That's crazy. All right, so now let's take a look at the second part of today's plan since the first part of today's plans didn't go well. I want to figure out why this window when rolling down seems to come off the tracks at the very bottom, okay? Now that it's down all the way, I'm sort of looking. Alright, so I ordered new door handles for Motorsport America, but they were actually out of the reproduction models and I didn't want to spend the double the amount to buy the official ones. So I ended up ordering these from FudoFab. As you can see, they are fairly reasonable. I've got to switch some parts over, but they'll look definitely very nice in the car and everything seems to be in pretty good shape here. I actually ended up getting both of the door handles, so this one and another one for about $40 shipped. So, um, you know, two door handles versus one door handle in case the other one breaks is a nice thing to have. Uh, and these came from FudoFab. Um, uh, from FudoFab. I've actually ordered several things from FudoFab in the past uh, for the 510, so they've been a very good shop and um, gladly work with them or buy things from them. Uh, but yeah, $35 plus $6 shipping or $8 shipping worked out to be $42.95 for two door handles. So here we go. We've got these two door handles. They were made in Taiwan. I'm probably not going to put the door together completely right now. I want to get some mat or something to put right here so I can sort of uh, kill that uh, vibration on the door and we'll go from there. But first I want to try to at least install the new uh, door handle so that way I can open and close the door or open the door from the outside of the car. So looking at the old door handle versus the new door handle, uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, difference in the way that they're set up, so that's nice. Alright, so first major difference here, looking at the original door handle, you had a width of um, 0.55 inches or 14 mil. Um, on this piece right here, 13.6, 13.7-ish um, mil on the old one, and then you look at the new one, and it is 15.7, and that actual extra 2 mil is making it where I can't get it into the slots inside the car, like on the actual outer door panel.
Alright, so that's the door handle replaced. In the next part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and replace the inner fuzzy piece on the door trim and install just a little couple of like sound deadening sheets on the outer skin. I might also see, since there's a little door ding right there, see if I can maybe push that back out flush with the rest of the door panel, just based on where it's at, and I've already got the door panel off. So, yeah. Um, I now have a door that opens, uh, which is much nicer than having a door handle that doesn't open. Um, so stay tuned, and we'll get to the next part here shortly. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> So in this part of the video I'm going to start working on the door panel. I'm going to remove the old fuzzy uh, piece on the top and install a new one as well as try to get the original pieces that hold the door panel onto the door out of the door and back into the door panel where they go. Alright, so in the next part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and take some sound deadener and install it into the door. And so for this, um, I ordered some parts off of Amazon to see how well they work. Uh, we've got uh, this roller, some scissors, uh, some gloves. The only other thing that I'm not showing right now is the cleaner that I'm going to sort of wipe down the inside of the door and then dry it off with some rubbing alcohol. Okay, so what came in the box was a Noiko 80 mil. 36 square feet of car sound deadening mat. So let's take a look at it. This is some of the cheaper but well reviewed stuff on Amazon. And as I'm driving this Z every single day, the road noise does get a little bit more than I really like to deal with every day. So I figured it was time to maybe look into some sound deadening. So here we go, got a, several nice sheets of it, so we'll go in and we'll figure out how much we can put inside the door and we'll go ahead and get that cut to shape and put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video now.
So real quick, we'll do a sound check. So. Okay, that was the before. So we'll have that. No. All right, so that part's done. So here, let's go ahead and try this again. Again. resonance up in this front part. I just don't know how to get a good amount of cheating up there. Might come with me. I mean it's alright so I've played around with it and I think I've got about as much as I'm gonna do um, on the inner door panel. There's, it's not a ton there but it's a little bit extra weight that hopefully will kill the resonance a little bit I think it does sound a little better, only post-processing this video will actually let me know whether or not that sound is any different, and uh, you'll probably see about as often, or as soon as I do, since i got to edit the video first. Uh, now I'm going to go through and clean up this old uh, sticky tape, and I'm going to actually put new, or I've got ordered new tape. It's, it's a, um, like, uh, so now that I've got those put in, I'm going to go ahead and remove this older sealant here, and I'll put in new sealant whenever I create a new inner door uh, vapor lock for this thing. So keep watching. All right, the next part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and try to remove the rest of the old butyl tape uh, for this piece, and then I will go ahead and um, put in a repurposed shower curtain here and uh, reinstall the door trim. Rather than buy a whole bunch of very expensive sheeting. Alright, so now that I've got the butyl tape mostly off of the car, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my new inner liner. Now instead of going out and buying some super expensive crazy inner liner, I actually went to the dollar store and bought a shower curtain liner for a dollar. And I'm going to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, tape it along the top here, trace out where I want it to go to, and then I'm going to cut it out and go from there. So keep watching. Now I've cut it uh, with this, I can actually go ahead and do the other door as well whenever I take that off eventually. So looking at this, uh, some things to note, I didn't actually need to draw the outline as long as I was willing to just, you know, uh, cut, um, I tape it on and then cut out the outline. Not, luckily I've got the old one. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in the new tape. Right, so as I've gotten older, I've decided to do things more the correct way than just the cheap and easy way sometimes. So uh, for the next part of this, I'll actually be using a butyl tape, which actually is a sort of like a tar that allows you to reuse um, this stuff. It stays, it actually stays sticky like forever, and you can stretch it out quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and peel off the first part. Right there.
All right, so I have a new inner liner on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the door trim back on. All right, I got these from Amazon along with a tool to remove these clips actually. Uh, these seem like they work pretty well. I popped one in the other day. I also have a Tool to remove them so I don't mess up my door skin whenever I, if I go back to remove it at some point in time. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and slip in the ones that don't already have a tab in them and reinstall the door trim. That took entirely way too long, but my door is somewhat fixed. Uh, in this video, I have put some sand deadening inside. I have cleaned up the um, track here. I've angled the window in, which I don't think I did off camera. I replaced some of the door clips, and I put a new inner sheeting on. So, uh, hopefully the car will be a little bit quieter now, which is good because I drive it every single day. Nice, satisfying thought.